Now to get Malema from South Africa, coming from nowhere, talking about succession in Zimbabwe, it shows that this is a foreign agenda. And to whom does Malema pander to? He panders to the dictates of the post-colonial or of the pre of the colonial company, colonial era company, Anglo-American which is an offshoot from Cecil John Rhodes, which actually ran this region from Cape Town up to the Copper Belt in Congo and Zambia. And it manifests itself today in an organization called the Brandest Foundation. The Brandest Foundation is the one which authored Mumba of Zambia's document about the elections in Zimbabwe. This is the ilk from which Julius Malema emanates from. He posits as a pseudo-revolutionary and a cryptic intellectual. He never pro pro properly went to school. And he propounds big theories about how Zimbabwe should be run, as if it is his own country. At 43 years of age, he is no longer a youth. Who is he from South Africa to try to tell the youths of Zimbabwe who should be their ruler? Malema, Pagati, Papaya, Ma. Why? Because he's a friend of Kasukweri, who a few days ago was echoing the same sentiments with the youths of Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe must arise, must arise. <laughs> he, has just run a, he has just been in an election. He comes third for a party which broke away from the NC several years ago. Third from Umkondo Esizgues, MK from Zoom, a part which is hardly six months. It's clear that his pseudo-revolutionary message within South Africa has reached a dead end. That's why he could be overtaken. That's why he never made it himself to become the president. So charity begins at home. If you are so good at leadership that you can uh, give strictures to Zimbabwean youth, why not make it success your own homegrown a ride to power at Mashambanzo in Pretoria, in Tswane. He can't. So he suffers from the Rhodes syndrome. And a sick young man comes from Europe, lands in South Africa, diamonds are discovered, he ends up as the ruler of South Africa and builds an empire from South Africa dreaming all the Cape to Cairo. These grandiose ideas uh, about an interloping colonial are the, what shapes Malema's mind. He sees himself as the ruler of Zimbabwe. <laughs> you know, as if the people of Zimbabwe on their own are not enough to be ruling their country. We say to him, keep your dead hands out of Zimbabwe's affairs, Malema. Focus on trying to win a South African election first. That's why there are boundaries. That's why the Limpopo is a boundary between Zimbabwe and South Africa. Uh, you know, he, she has no authority at all to be speaking about Zimbabwean politics. And uh, these illusions and delusions of grandeur of being a latter-day African Cecil John Rhodes, uh, straddling from Cape to Cairo. <laughs> this time he wants to say from, from, uh, from Cape to, to Harare. It won't happen. Our youths, I will speak about what they've done for this country later, they will not listen to the nonsense which is coming from Malema. He has no deliverables himself from within his political career, which one can count off. Now you are being told by a charlatan from South Africa to work against a government which has made you so rich that you can account for $2 billion. You think they will listen to him? They won't. This is what Zimbabwe's youth have achieved. So his miseducation and the cryptic knowledge of Malema about school created this subversive combustion which makes them talk about things which are beyond their intellectual capabilities to grasp. Nobody will listen 
to them because Zimbabwe's youths are achievers. Look at what they are doing with the gold leaf of, gold, of tobacco. 800 million US dollars every season. Satisfying the best cigarette makers in the whole world. That's why every March they all come to the tobacco auction floors in Zimbabwe. World-class tobacco production, Zimbabwe is number one. Who is doing it? Zimbabwe is used. These things would not have been possible without the Zimbabwe revolution. And the stabilization of the currency is seeing this world translate into the pockets of these young people. Now you want to tell them that there is something wrong about their government. Uh, you go to have your head, get your head examined. So the Zimbabwe youths, they are focused on progress and they see deliverables coming from our president. Obviously, when the Malemas start talking of succession and they are not members of the party and they are not Zimbabweans, it creates anxiety among these youth. So they develop a defensive attitude and they go for strong leadership. That's why they are saying to President Rabai Muripo, because we want to safeguard the wins which we are, we are scoring right now. You have delivered wins. We see more of them coming. We want Burambe Muripo. It's a democratic wish on the part of the youths. After all, it's a revolutionary democratic part. They are free, like the women, like the war veterans, to express themselves on that particular issue. You cannot say they should be stopped from debating, from expressing their intentions. But at the same time, they are also pushing back against the anxiety and insecurity of those who want to become dictators of who should be the ruler of Zimbabwe and who should not be.